Welcome. This is the Cisco CCNA ENSA, also known as the Enterprise Networking Security and Automation course. This course focuses on the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is course 3 of 3. Module 5, ACLs for IPv4 configuration. We're going to be talking about configuring a standard ACL and an extended ACL, how to modify our ACLs, and we're going to go ahead and talk about how to secure our line console, our VTY ports, with a standard ACL. So let's go ahead and jump right on in, configuring a standard IPv4 ACL. So to create a IPv4 ACL, first thing you want to do, you probably want to use a text editor, write out what you're wanting to do. Add the appropriate iOS configuration commands to accomplish the tasks, include the appropriate remarks, and then test and implement those ACL or ACEs to make up that ACL. Always thoroughly test the ACL before we apply it into a live environment because ACLs take effect immediately and we can do some serious damage if we apply them and uh, we didn't mean to. So what is the syntax? Well, first of all, from a global configuration point, you type an access list, space, a uh, number. Again, if it's a standard, it's going to be uh, between the numbers 1 and 99. If it's extended, it will be between 100 and 199. Next is the action. Are we going to do a permit or deny? Or are we doing a remark? Again, our remark is uh, the way that we comment these. Next, because this is a standard, we only have to have a source location or a source address. So we'll have a source and a source wildcard. Also, it's optional, but we can also log this as well. Now, to remove this access uh, entry, we could do a no access list and then the appropriate number and that will remove that numbered ACL from the configuration. If we are talking a named ACL, what we would do is IP access list standard because we're doing a standard type of ACL and then give it the name. So again, if we're doing extended, we do IP access list extended and then the appropriate name. You'll notice it puts us into a different sub uh, command. From there, we could issue our statements as well as our sequence numbers. Our sequence numbers are a way to actually align what our ACL is doing. Again, the order does matter, so if we uh, need to modify the ACL, we can actually manipulate those sequence numbers to reorder the structure of an ACL. So how do we apply a ACL? Well, first of all, we're going to be doing an IP access group you assign it the appropriate either name or number and then you do a either in or out. Again, this is going to be done on an interface. So if you want to apply this access list as it enters ingress of the interface, you do it in. If you want to apply this as it leaves the interface, it would be an egress. You'd be doing it, uh, applying it as it leaves or it goes out the interface. And again, we have our labs verifying that we know how to do this. So here's an example of a access list. You'll notice that it actually goes a number, provides like the number 10, for example, or the number 20. These are the sequence numbers. This allows us to rank our sequence, and it goes, it goes first to last, the order that we input them. If we don't input a sequence number, it does it for us. Normally they're hidden, However, if we need to modify a ACE or an ACL with a new ACE, we can add a sequence number and that finds the appropriate location. So here we have two ACLs. We have access list 10 and we have two permit statements. And what we would be doing is we're going to apply this to the serial 010 interface. And we do that by again issuing the IP access tag group 10. And as it leaves or as it egresses the interface, that's where we want to apply it. That is now going to take that ACL 
and apply it to that interface and all traffic leaving that interface. Now again, remember that ACLs have an implicit deny at the end. So even though we have two permits, if traffic doesn't match one of those, it will match the implicit deny. So do keep that in mind. So how do you verify? We can verify using two show commands. We can do show run config, pipe in the section we want to look at, access control list, or we can do a show IP interface and we can look at the access lists that are applied to that interface. Let's run through an example completely through a named ACL. So here we remove the numbered ACL and we replace it with the name. So we'll do an IP access list standard, give it a name, we allow uh, whatever remarks we want, we add the permit or the action items, we add the uh, rest of the ones that we need, and then we apply it to an interface. Again, IP access group, permit uh, access, that's the name, and we have to say either in or out. Here we're processing it as it leaves. How can we verify? We can do show IP, uh, show access list one, show P uh, int serial is another, and again, sectioning out the portion that just has access list. That way we can see what content is actually there. Here we have a packet tracer lab giving us configuring a numbered standard IPv4 ACL. We also have another one covering slightly something different. So what happens if you make a mistake and you need to modify it? There are two ways to do this. After an ACL is configured, we may have to modify it. ACLs with multiple ACEs can be complex to configure, so sometimes the configured ACE doesn't know the appropriate response. So how do we modify it? Either a text editor or a sequence number. Here's the text editor method. What we can do is we can copy the portion of the commands out of the running config, put it in a note document, make the changes, uh, remove whatever uh, you don't want, add the appropriate comments, paste it back into the command terminal, and there your ACL is complete. Or, if you cannot copy it out, you can do a sequence numbered method. Basically, use the IP access list standard we would then be able to see the appropriate notations. From there, we could remove lines if necessary. So if we want to remove uh, sequence number 10, we could issue a no 10 command, and that would drop that line. So if we need to modify to go between 10 and 20, for example, we could do 15. 15 would actually fit between 10 and 20. So again, named ACLs like standard ACLs and extended ACLs use sequence numbers to delete and add ACEs. We can always verify with another show access. We can also start seeing counters, what content is matching. These are going to be known as ACL statistics. Again, we have a lab covering how to configure it. Moving forward, how do we actually secure a line port with a standard ACL? Well, we already know the appropriate uh, access class. We already know how to assign a standard ACL to an interface. We already know how to set up a standard ACL. So here, you're going to notice that instead of an access group, it's an access class. That's really one of the only differences. We, uh, we use the access class in our line configuration. So you would go ahead, set up a username, set up a standard ACL, go ahead and go to the appropriate line, and then you do an access class, and normally it'd be the name or the number, and as it is in or, uh, going into the device, that would filter the appropriate uh, requirements. So we could verify by checking or looking at the show access lists and looking at the statistics. So that's all well and dandy if we're talking standard. So how do we do this with a extended ACL? And the entire next section is about extended ACLs. And just like anything else, 
you can have both numbered or named. If we are doing a numbered ACL, there will be access lists. If we're doing a named ACL, it will be an IP access list extended and then the rest of the port uh, commands. Now again, if you have to filter based off of destination or port number or layer 4 ports, then an extended ACL is what you have to use. So looking at some of our options, if we do a, a regular numbered access list, we do a question mark, we can do all types of things. We can filter off of protocols, we can filter off of IP addresses. So here's a common mistake on the exam. When you do filtering based off of, let's say, TCP port 20, if you do access list 100, permit IP source destination, and you give it a port number, well, that won't work because IP is not associated with port numbers. TCP or UDP are associated with port numbers. So if you're filtering based off of, let's say, port 80, it would need to be access list 100 permit TCP source destination port number. I've actually seen several learners get stuck at that point. So that is an important thing to recognize is whatever you're permitting, you have to make sure that it's matching what you're trying to accomplish. And again, here's a much larger list of protocols that are there and other features. So how do we configure this? We can do it a few different ways. Here, here we're doing, instead of using port numbers, we're using certain protocols. Like WWW is port 80. SSH is port 22. HTTPS is port 443. So you can do certain names in a in, instead of their port numbers for mainstream ports. So here we're blocking both port 80 and 443. Even though we didn't list port 80, we listed port for www. So how do we establish an extended ACL? Remember that TCP is also performed basic stateful firewall services using the TCP word establishment feature. Meaning, only responses that originate from inside will actually come back through. That's what that establish keyword actually means. So TCP traffic generated by an outside host attempting to communicate with an inside host will not be allowed. Only those that have been generated inside will allow a response coming back in. So here is an example of establishment. We set up our ACL, we give it the appropriate uh, numbering, we give it the source and destination. As long as we have established at the end, it will allow traffic to come back in as long as it initiated from the inside. So essentially a match occurs if the returning TCP segment has the appropriate ACK or reset flag bit set indicating that the packet belongs to an existing connection. Here we have an example of an IP access list extended name. And here we're filtering out uh, FTP access. If we are looking at browsing, we can do the same thing. We can apply interfaces different ways. So the topology below will demonstrate configuration of being applied to named ACLs Surfing basically will permit HTTP and HTTPS traffic to exit to go to the internet. While browsing, this will only re uh, permit returning web traffic to the inside while all other traffic exiting R1 is explicitly denied. So we can filter traffic based off of whatever criteria we need. Browsing being specific streaming traffic, if that is what you want to do. Here's an example of how we would set it up. We'd be setting up an extended for surfing. And then we set up one for browsing with our, our established connections. And we block everything else. Again, ending portion of an ACL is always that implicit deny. How do we uh, verify? We could do a show access list. 
and that will show the appropriate access lists with their sequence numbers and if there are any statistics. How do we exit it? Well, we type exit like no one else. If we need to modify, we can modify using our sequence numbers. If we need to remove, same thing. We would do no and the sequence number and it would remove that sequence number. Here's another example for an extended ACL. Here we have PC1 only permitted TC, uh, PC1 to send TCP access to the internet and it denies all other hosts. But it also allows incoming traffic to be only tied to PC1. Everything else would be denied. Here we have our appropriate permits for PC1, for FTP, for SSH, for Telnet, for DNS, for HTTP and HTTPS, and it denies everything else. Again, the order matters. This way, if it matches the first sequence number, the second, the third, the fourth, and so forth, if it doesn't, it will hit the deny IP, and if it doesn't get caught by that, there is the implicit deny at the very end. Even though it doesn't show, it is still there. How do we verify? We do that with three different show commands. Here's a show IP interface. We can see the incoming and outgoing interfaces and ACLs that are applied. We can also do a show access list, and that will show us the appropriate access lists with their sequence numbers, and so we have to modify them. We could do a show run. We could pipe in the begin IP access list, and that will also give us our access lists. We have a lab configuring it. We have another lab configuring it, and that is it for this module. So we actually have several labs covering how to configure ACLs. We also have a challenge lab discussing how to configure our ACLs as well. We have a physical mode setting up, again, a, a, a ACL for different functionality. So what did we learn in this lesson? We talked about setting up access lists, both standard and ACL. We set, or sorry, uh, both standard and extended ACLs. We also talked about numbered versus named ACLs. We talked about the importance of understanding an ACL versus an ACE, how to navigate, how to modify, how to remove sequence numbers in an ACL. We also talked about applying it to an interface, either a access group versus an access class, depending on what we're trying to accomplish. We looked at both filtering in versus filtering out. We looked at looking at extended ACLs and how we can do certain protocols instead of just filtering off of an IP address. And then we looked at how to modify. And that is it for this chapter. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture help build long-term retention. So do not be afraid to, to communicate with this topic. Again, I'm here if you need anything. Thank you.